Today, we're gonna talk about this. Woof. Today, we're gonna talk about this. Supercell's new game, Boom Beach Frontlines. Is the gameplay actually good? How bad is the monetization? And is it even worth getting hyped about this game? We'll talk about that and more, but today's episode also includes an awesome new racing game and the most interesting runner I've played all year. So buckle up, because here's today's first game, Monopusto. This is a surprisingly high quality indie Formula One inspired simulation racing game with both single player and competitive online multiplayer across 22 tracks. Overall, the game definitely leans more towards being a simulation game than an arcade experience and this means we actually have to use our brakes to stay on the track not to mention that there are qualifiers before each race pit stops where our car gets repaired several camera angles and a good level of vehicle customization options now thanks to the great special effects you also truly get a sense of driving at blazingly fast speeds when playing monoposto which is something so many racing games fail at so it's honestly a bit of a positive surprise coming from an indie game the touch controls also work well and there's even bluetooth controller support the only downside are that the UI buttons aren't immediately intuitive and that the online multiplayer isn't exactly super active. Thankfully though, the game only costs $199 US dollars on iOS and the quick races and online multiplayer are completely free to play on Android with the other game modes then unlocking through a $199 US dollar in-app purchase. The game can be played offline, it takes up 460 megabytes of space and while it may not keep you hooked forever, it's definitely one to check out if you like racing games and it also has a 100% positive user rating score on Mini Review. Another great game I've played recently is this one called Kinja Run, which is essentially a casual action game that mixes typical forward runner gameplay with bullet hell like combat for a unique and fast paced gameplay experience. So the objective in this game is to get through 10 stages full of enemies and obstacles and then eventually defeat the boss waiting at the end of the chapter. And once we die, or if we're good enough, kill the boss, we get a bunch of currency and loot that we then use to improve our character with new items and permanent upgrades before then continuing to the next procedurally generated 10 stage chapter. But this is where it gets interesting though, because unlike most forward runners, Kinjo Run is laneless, which means we can freely move our character left and right instead of swiping to jump between a few predefined lanes. And while we do that, our character then runs forward and shoots bullets automatically. Now, just like in a game of Artero, after every one of these 10 stages, we get to pick one of three random upgrades that last until we die again. These range from extra bullets to heat seeking missiles and even clones of ourselves that help deal damage. And the game Gameplay experience, of course, gets increasingly more exciting the more of these upgrades we collect. But what about the monetization then? Well, Kinjo Run monetizes via a few incentivized ads, a battle pass, and then other in-app purchases that let paying players grow stronger faster. These in-app purchases don't really hinder free players from enjoying the game, but the energy system does limit us to six plays before we have to wait for a bit. You have to be online to play the game, it takes up 800 megabyte of space, and despite the monetization system, the gameplay is honestly just great fun for 10 to 15 minutes play sessions and it's a good alternative to archero likes or traditional runners. Okay, let's talk about Boom Beach Frontlines then. This is a 9 vs 9 multiplayer action shooter that plays like a very simplified casual MOBA and it's currently out in about 20 regions worldwide published by Space Apes, which Supercell owns the majority of. Now, the goal in this game is to capture two areas on the map marked as A and B and if our team captures both, we win the match. Once an area has been captured though, it turns into a mini base where we can spend points on building defensive structures that deal damage to any incoming enemies, making that area harder to capture. But the game actually goes one step further with this system and allows us to also spawn AI-controlled helpers or even tanks that we can drive around in to deal massive damage. And I really enjoyed this part of the gameplay. In between matches, we grow stronger through a battle pass, which unlocks new heroes, new units, and new defensive structures. And just like in any Supercell game, once we have enough duplicates, we can then level them up so they grow stronger. We also need to buy and upgrade great buildings that are based though to get better quests, better items in the shop and so on. But these upgrades take time and they honestly just feel like needless features only meant to gatekeep progression for free players, unfortunately. The short matches are perfect for mobile though, but we're also clearly playing bots from time to time and without more game modes, the game eventually grows a bit stale in my opinion. But the biggest downside is that Boom Beach Frontlines monetizes through in-app purchases that allow us to progress faster, giving paying players a big 
unique advantage. The game requires online access, it takes up 570 megabyte of space, and while it can be enjoyed for free if you're patient enough, to me personally, it did not live up to the hype, so just know what you're getting yourself into here. Next up is a burrito bison style action game called Super Touch the Turtle, where we shoot a turtle as fast as we can using cannons, bows, rockets, nukes, and just other crazy weaponry. I mean, does it get any better than that? I don't think so. Now the core gameplay has us first aim and time when to launch ourselves and then use weapons and bombs to fly higher, avoid all the funny obstacles and hit as many boosters as possible such as tanks, gangster dogs, chainsaw guys and more like that. And when we eventually die by either peacefully running out of speed or violently crashing on floating spikes and other obstacles, we can then spend cash on buying stronger cannons, jetpacks and other upgrades that help us get further the next time. With its over the top weapons, extreme death scenarios and animations and lots of well-designed and wacky characters to unlock, the game is also just hilarious. I mean, who wouldn't want a Soda Mentos jetpack or an eagle character with Trump's hair on it? Super Touch the Turtle monetizes through a few in-app purchases for the shells used to unlock new cosmetic characters, incentivized ads for more shells, and then very rare false stats. It can also be played offline, takes up 305 megabyte of space, and while the game is quick to finish, it's easily one of the best within the genre, so it's an easy recommendation. My favorite game this week is Super Touch the Turtle, but I recently covered the very best turn-based strategy game alternatives to XCOM and Heroes of Might and Magic. So check that out next, and until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.